Hello, hello. What's going on? Welcome to another episode of the Urban Platform Speaks. This is a Money Monday edition, and I have my guest today is Miss Lisa Florenzen. She is going to help me talk about business opportunities and career opportunities in this uh, this economy. Uh, Lisa is an entrepreneur, a business owner, a writer, an author. Um, let me see what what else, Lisa. What else could I add to uh, your resume? I know I know you wear a, a lot of hats, so you know as an entrepreneur you wear a lot of hats. So what else? Could I, I add? That is funny. Thank you, Mike. I'm so honored to be here. Yeah, those hats um, sometimes get you in trouble, but um, yeah, there's some other things in there. We could talk about those on another show. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, I, I call myself a small business with army knife because mm -hmm. in small business, especially when you run one or you help someone run one, you have mm -hmm. to wear a lot of hats. So right. um, in my 25 plus years of working with startups and small businesses, you get hired for one day, one thing and eventually you do a lot more, whether you right. know it or not. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. Well, I mean, I can definitely uh, uh, attest to that because when we started doing business together, you was doing some uh, some writing for me for my website. I think it was. Yeah, and then so then it, you know, it's business consulting and and stuff like that. So yeah, you definitely uh, it do turn into different things. So um, yeah, but like I said, all right. So I, I wanted to talk about like business opportunities and this. Uh, this economy because you know i just i was talking to like some young people and i was you know i was like well what's what's the job market like you know like what do you think as far as you know what are y'all going to do today as far as uh you know finding work and what opportunities and you know so i thought this would be a, a helpful topic to discuss you know and let people know about what's out there today Yes, absolutely, Mike. So, you know, I think it's great that we are discussing it because really you're looking at May, June, when you're going to have a lot of college kids graduating and you're going to have a lot of high schools, you know, high schoolers graduating as well. I mean, everybody's going to be graduating for, for the most part. Somebody's going to, you know, from third grade to fourth and, you know, uh, 12th grade on to life. So, um, you know, they it's good for them to understand what opportunities there are out there for them at, if they yeah. want to start their own businesses um, or if they want to join an existing business. Yeah. So now I, I did some research and I came up with like a top 10 list of the, some of the industries, you know, uh, that are out there. And so we can start with now the first thing on the, on the list was uh, what was the first thing? Oh, I'm sorry. E-commerce. <laughs> and online retail you know and so like now with e-commerce like what can you basically tell me like what e-commerce is about like what it consists of well really in a nutshell it's you know if you're familiar with amazon if you've bought anything online that is really e-commerce i mean you know if okay. you're on a custom website like etsy where mm -hmm. curators create their own things or you're on a walmart.com or whatever and uh, yeah. There is no person that I know around hasn't purchased one thing or another online that would be e-commerce. And <clears throat> nowadays, as you and I talked before the, you know, before recording, before the show, mm -hmm. um, it's very easy to start an e-commerce platform with mm -hmm. little or no experience or little to no money. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's and that's a good thing about it. And so, and e-commerce e can be business to business or uh, business to consumer, you know. And um, absolutely, yeah, it yeah. could be and business to business to consumer. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there is no end to the opportunity. Um, yeah. You just have to do some homework, find the platform that works for you. Um, you know, drop shipping seems to be a very good way for some people to start. Drop shipping in e-commerce basically means that someone else is doing all the shipping for you. Someone else has the products for you. Someone else does all your logistics. And <clears throat> when they get paid for the order, um, the difference goes to you. That's kind of I'm yeah. simplifying it really, you know, drilling it down. But that's pretty much what it means. And that's good. And I think um, so 
and there's opportunities in e-commerce for both entrepreneurs and for people that are looking for a career. You know what I mean? Like people who just want to work for somebody else. So you don't really necessarily have to be an entrepreneur. But for me, I think being an entrepreneur, you know, um, being an entrepreneur, I think, I don't know, that fits me. You know what I mean? But, you know, some people. Yes, you're right. Absolutely. If you don't want to start your own business or you're hesitant or anything of that nature, there are other, you know, huge yeah. giants out there and, and bustling mom and pops that need the help in e-commerce. You know, you can work from home and take orders and help yeah. fulfill, um, you know, customer service requests and things of that nature. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. And um, I just want to mention that now, all, now you did provide me with like uh, websites and stuff like that. So I just, I'm going to let people know that all of those websites that you provided me for, for the, each one of these, uh, you know, these career opportunities that we're going to speak about is going to be in the description, you know, when yeah. this when the video is posted. Absolutely. Yeah. Those those websites are really more for a, re a research. Um, you know, some of those are industry um, statistic uh, marketing analysis companies. They look at the e-commerce industry as a whole. Um, there may be other resources in there that somebody could just click on and boom, there they are in front of an opportunity. So, Yes, yeah, those are yeah. really for people to do their own due diligence. Yeah. And so, like you said, though, is once people do their own diligence and they do some research, um, you know, they'll find, you know, the opportunities that are available. I, I think, you know, to me, that's a good career. You know what I mean? People can really make a, a good living in that in that field. So so and that was number one on the list. So um, number two on the list was health and nutrition. And so we see a lot of people going into into this field, like health and nutrition. For instance, you, you know, people who are um, nutritionists or people who are into like fitness and stuff like that. They go, you know, these are some of the fields that they um, that are available for that. Well, you yeah. can see that. <clears throat> I mean, we have an aging population. We also have a young population. And you can see that, you know. Um, I mean, the statistics are not just statistics. They're actual, you know, science-based information that, you know, 80% of, over 80% of the United States is de de deemed, deemed um, clinically obese. Um, so that means over 50 pounds or more of, mm -hmm. um, of weight. And so, you know, with that comes a potential host of problems along with aging population along with, you know, people born with certain um, medical needs. Yeah. That That isn't going to go away. And unfortunately, the pandemic made it so that a lot of, I don't know of a state right now that isn't going through a medical um, personnel crisis, meaning there are more people needing the services than there are people to serve them. And those yeah. that are in remote locations that have to drive an hour, that's even worse for them. So yeah. we are definitely anybody who's got, you know, who goes to school for a health or wellness profession, dietitians, physical therapists, obviously doctors, RNs, even nursing assistants or medical assistants, that is a very valuable um, education to have. It isn't easy, obviously, to become a doctor or a nurse. But the financial rewards are there. The personal rewards are there. Yeah. And uh, there are a lot of opportunities for people in the medical field and the health and wellness field right now as well. Yeah. yeah. And I, I agree. I just think that this uh, this field right here is really growing. You know, the health and nutrition field is really uh, is definitely really growing. So that'll be, you know, more opportunities for people. And uh so yeah, healthcare workers are always needed. Oh, you know, never no layoffs and, and always a demand basically for healthcare workers. So True. um all right, so the next one on the list is uh now this is the uh e learning industry. And so let's let's you know let's talk about the e learning industry. Well, you and, know, since the pandemic, uh mm -hmm. And everything, you know, with that craziness, 
Mm. People hopped online even more because obviously there wasn't any place else for them to go. You know, yeah. if places were shut down, they needed to utilize the internet more. And so learning management systems, uh, um, places to create your own content, life coaching, business coaching, that industry, all that e-learning stuff has just blown up. Um, yeah. I believe it's due to be like a $45 billion industry plus by the end of this year, if not by the end of 2025. Uh, I might yeah. be a little low on those numbers, Mike, but in that situation, you know, a lot of places didn't come back to brick and mortar to do mm -hmm. schools since everyone discovered that they could just learn online. That's where it's at. It's not to say yeah. that in person isn't great, uh, but it's so much more time friendly, economical um, for people just to hop on a course or a brief micro learning course and get their education and and get an accreditation or a certificate or even their own degrees online. It's not right. going to slow down. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, again, many opportunities in the, those industries for our entrepreneurs and people who are just looking for a career. So, you know, it's really um, unlimited. So, yeah, that, that's a good one, too. So and so now we are going to go to uh, the technology services. Now, what 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 do you what is this industry about technology services? Well, it's really <clears throat> excuse me. It's really about you know if you have a problem with your PC, if you have a, you know a broken screen on your phone or your yeah. tablet, it's really also about services that include security for your PC, for your devices. It's also about remote storage for your devices. And with, you know, I don't know about you, but I, you know, I've been, I've been hacked in, in my cryptocurrency. I, I've had a time frame where I think I got a letter a month from a health, a big healthcare conglomerate, credit wow. card companies, whoever had my information, they were hacked. So oh. if you've never experienced hacking before, it's, you know, kind of crypto um, cybersecurity is another huge piece of the tech services because you've got to, you know, you want to feel like your information is safe. Is it? Right. Probably not. But right. anybody in, in ethical hacking, Anybody who understands how to fix a screen, <laughs> yeah. anybody who understands those types of tech services or can get some training on those tech services is going to be super valuable. Yeah. And so, yeah. So, and so, yeah. And that, so that, that feeds into like what you just said about cybersecurity. I, you know, definitely this industry is growing because like you said, people finding ways to get hold of your information. Um, and all different kinds of scans that, you know, like people wouldn't even thought about, you know, like about five, 10, 15 years ago. It's just crazy. It's, you know, it's, it's crazy. I, um, I saw on, I think it was on social media somewhere. It may have been Facebook where they take at the gas stations, you know, how you slide your, um, what is it? Your credit card into, you know, to pay for gas. And people like made this little device where they can stick it over top of the gas pump. And when you slide your uh, credit card in, they can steal your information like that. Yes, so. it's called a skimmer. And I've seen several videos about people discovering how those skimmers get placed on there. And it really is, I mean, the people who make these skimmers are really ingenious because the average person, if you don't know what you're looking at, you just think you're swiping your card in and making a purchase. When in reality, you're swiping a card and you're giving someone access to your entire, you know, the back door of your credit card system and yeah. maybe even more. So it is it is beyond rampant. Um, <clears throat> there aren't enough ethical hackers out there to stop some of these people. And you're right. The scams just get more creative year by year. Yeah. So, yeah, this I mean, this is just a whole different level of crime that, you know. That's, that's, oh that's yeah. Great. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. And so now, like, uh, 
next industry I want to talk about is like work work from home. I see a lot of people uh, are able to, you know, a lot of jobs now are able to because of also like you said with the uh, with the pandemic. This has blown up too, like opportunities for people to work from home. Absolutely. And this kind of touches on what we talked about with, you know, e-learning and things of that nature. There's a lot of people who are super, super creative and created ways to, you know, bust into industries or or make new industries actually just working from home. And <clears throat> excuse me, with that said, there's if a company is not looking for some remote workers, then you can be your own remote worker. You There's countries that are even offering remote workers to come and move there and creating incentives. Even United States states are creating incentives for people who have remote working skills so that they can come in and, and breathe new life into their cities yeah. and to some of these countries. So now, so like what type of, what type of work? So you said they would come there and they would do the, uh, so like, would it be like accounting or stuff that they don't have to necessarily go to the office to do anymore? They can just do it, you know, on a computer um, and just make, basically travel and just log in and do your work from wherever you are, you know, at, happen to be that week. There are millions of people doing that right now. I mean, they're working for other companies or they're working for themselves and all yeah. they need is the Internet. You know, yeah. they can do their accounting, they can do their writing, they can do their, you know, a statistical analysis. They don't need yeah. to be in the office. So yeah. really, it could be most anything that you can do on a computer. You And as long as you have Wi-Fi, you can take it anywhere in the world that you want. Yeah, see, that's a profession I wish was available when I was first starting out. Of work. Me too. You know, that is crazy. I, when I heard people say work from home. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't available for me either, Mike. And uh, I know we're showing our age, but you know, yeah. now we can we can look at us. We're doing it right now, right? So yeah, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. So um I'm keeping up with the times, even though you know it's not voluntarily, they just dragging <laughs> me along, kicking and screaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's something for uh for people to look into, you know, being able to work from home. Okay, so the next one we're going to go into is the wellness industry. Now, you know, like with wellness, this kind of feeds into like like the healthcare and stuff like that. But it's I'm thinking more so with uh, like people. I don't know if you can maybe you can explain it better. Like what would the wellness industry? be? Well, it's really about the self-care. It's you know, it does encompass health as well. Mm -hmm. But really, it's about mental care. It's about psychological care. You know, okay. it's about <clears throat> it's about, you know, self-care. And it's also about an industry that, you know, your spa day, you know, and I don't know if you've had a spa day lately, but um, yeah. <laughs> but it's uh, about have... taking <laughs> yeah. it's about taking time out, having professionals who understand, you know, massage or aromatherapy or oh. pressure points or, even yeah. you know, actually your health and wellness people. Um, it's really about the overall wellness spiritual religious whatever you want to encompass it but it's just really about that industry which takes care of other people <clears throat> it could be hospice workers um you know who are dealing with end of life situations for other people um that is providing a level of wellness for those people at the end of their lives um it could be your massage therapist it could be you know your life coach or your business coach they provide tools and services and products to help with your overall wellness. And if you know, um, if you're taking courses in high school or if you're taking courses in college, um, it's very good because there's always someone somewhere that's going to need some type of wellness service. Yeah, yeah. So now do you think that, so, but what about now, do people need to necessarily go to college or this will be something that, you know, depending on what field it is, I guess. They can go to a college, you know, um, but they can also go to a specialized school. Um, right. You know, there are trade schools. They can learn online. They can do some internships that help them with that. If the cost of going to college is just not reasonable, um, which it's not at times. <clears throat> right. um, there are scholarships that people can apply to. But really, earning before you learn is the way kind of I grew up. 
And I, you know, I did go to a specialized school um, back in the day for broadcasting and journalism. But um, although, you know, college was not really my thing and I tried, there are definitely specialized schools that people yeah. can go online or in person um, to get wellness skills. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think that um, no matter what field people go into, they definitely need to study and, um, and research and stuff like that, you know, you know, so absolutely. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And touching back on the, you know, the health and, and I'm sure we're going to touch on, you know, senior services, they health and wellness and, you know, all that really does um, fitness and nutrition. They all, it's a circle and they all encompass each other. And if you've got one of those skills, it's not too hard to stack some other skills on there and make yourself even more valuable in the marketplace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good advice. That's excellent advice. Yeah. So okay. So let's let's go into this right. This one right here is 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 big. This is really blowing up now. Um, content creation. You know, everybody now is a content creator, and uh, but I think there's a lot of opportunities in you know content creation, and uh, you know, so I, I think this is really blowing up too. Uh, yeah, I agree with, obviously, with the inception of TikTok and Facebook and, and things of that nature, content will always be king. And but the content has really changed is, you know, with micro, I mean, with micro learning, um, Facebook shorts, you know, Instagram reels, it seems yeah. that, you know, our capacity for attention is obviously much, much shorter now. And so if you can create those types of things that are really moving the needle for a business or for yourself or for an organization or nonprofit, you could, you know, you could really kind of name your price uh, once you get really set, you know, step your foot into the industry. I mean, you and I met through content. You needed content for your speaker uh, organization. Right. And that's how you and I met through a graphics designer and you needed that website to be, you knew what you wanted to say, but you just had, you know, you needed some help saying it, right? Right, right, yeah, I needed a professional so, to say it, yeah. <laughs> so that's what really content is, it's a story, it's a tagline, it's whatever you want, it's a video, it's a reel, it's a short documentary, it could be a voiceover, it, it really is a, an industry that is not going to go away as long as the internet is up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and it's a broad, like it's a broad industry. Yeah, yeah. So now, what about training? Do you think people necessarily need some type of uh, formal training for content uh, creation? Honestly, the way things are right now, you can hop online, watch a dozen or so <laughs> YouTube videos. Seriously, I know it wasn't. It's not like you know when I started you know, I went to school and I went to some more trainings and don't get me wrong, trainings and certifications are great, but really mm -hmm. the learning curve is just learn it, mm -hmm. practice it, and then put it into execution. Pick out some people that you know that need some help with, you know, maybe it's just, you know, somebody wants to ask somebody out and they need, they want to create something witty to say, or maybe it's just somebody needs a post or somebody needs something for their business, a slogan, try it out that way and yeah. get some good testimonials and feedback under your belt. And there you have it. You now you, you are, you know, once you get paid, now you're a professional, yeah. you're a professional copywriter, you're a professional content creator, you know? So right, it's right. not as lengthy a process as it was when I got started. Yeah. For yeah. sure. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that's, that's, yeah, that is a good thing about it. It's like you can you can earn as you learn, you know, and go along, you know, so that that's a good thing about content creation. And um, so many people who need assistance in that content creation feel like, you know, people may need, like you said, copyright and, or uh, maybe uh, people who know how to edit and stuff like that, you know, so that's a broad field also. And it's like you said, not going anywhere. Nope. All right. So. Let's go into the next one is home improvement. Now, with me being a, a, a blue collar worker, I'm glad to see that, you know, 
some of the skills that I possess will still be, you know, it'll be opportunities for people with home improvement field. And uh, so what do you think about the home improvement field not going anywhere? I think it's incredible, actually. And with the econ the state of the economy, that how it's been over the last few years and at present, more people are choosing to do their own DIY. More people mm -hmm. are choosing to regut and renovate their own things. I mean, yes, they probably have to hire some other professionals for certain things like plumbing or HVAC or electrical that they may not possess themselves. But guess what? Even a YouTube video can show you how to do that. So oh, yeah. that that yeah that industry is not going anywhere there are more yeah. people um looking into doing renovations and add-ons as best as pop possible it seems that you know sometimes the industry wherever you are in your area people just you know if you do call a plumber or you do call someone in hvac they don't always get back to you immediately and you're stuck with a an emergency situation that sometimes you just can't wait on so People yeah. do tend to look at videos, read books still, <laughs> and yeah. find the information they need just to bypass or even repair the whole situation themselves. And that industry is not going anywhere. Right, right. Yeah, I agree. Um, I have seen ever since the pandemic that a lot of people are uh, they're doing the work themselves. And so if you do have a specialized skill like electrician or plumber, then, you know, you'll do pretty, you'll do pretty good. Um, and also you, I'm dealing with now more people who are uh, smaller, like startup type realtors, people who own probably like about a handful of properties, maybe four or five properties, you know, instead of like the large property management companies that I used to deal with, a lot of those guys are not calling me as much as the smaller companies. So I, so I had to kind of switch up, you know, my marketing and try and, uh, target the smaller, you know, home improvement companies. But uh, yeah, that's that's definitely a, uh, you know, where the business is too. Home improvement, I mean, we always need somewhere to live. So, you know, that <laughs> industry is not going anywhere no time soon. Or, need, or we need people who know how to build those little tiny houses so that mm. we can find places to live. So right. those skills, um, whether you are from a formal education or from a DIY education, yeah. um, we still need people who can sling hammers and fix toilets and help with foundations. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That's where I I watched. Um, I went to YouTube University. I learned how to build a patio during the pandemic. I didn't have anything else to do, and I was watching YouTube. And uh, yeah, I built the patio. It turned out pretty good too. I was surprised. That is awesome. <laughs> See, you're exactly what we're talking about, Mike. Yeah, I'm a graduate of YouTube University. <laughs> um, all right, so the last one on the list I want to talk about is, and a, a lot of the, this is senior services. So a lot of the, you know, a few of these really, like you say, they, they kind of stack up on top of each other as far as like being in the health field and the wellness field. But um, senior services was also made the list on the top 10 as to what will be available in the, uh, in the future. Well, as we know, you know, Mike, you and I are, well, it depends on where you go for your discount, but we're either seniors or we're not seniors or not. Yeah. <laughs> but that being said, um, th this is, you know, the population is aging. Mm -hmm. You know, we have outlived what we thought we could live at, you know, back in my day, you know, when I was younger, it seemed like if you were in your 60s, that was super old. Well, now there are people living to 80s, 90s, 100s. Right. They, their quality of life may not be great or it, you know, where they still need services. They still need, you know, some assisted living services. They still need some medical attention. They still need help with their meds. They are not able to do, um, you know, daily living things like, you know, showering or bathing and and even toileting. And I know that sounds really terrible, but it's a fact of life. You know, yeah, some that. seniors need that. They need that extra care. And some families just don't have the resources or the time or the energy or the money to um, get that to them. So they have to hire that out. And yeah. it's a 
you know, multi-billion dollar industry that is not going away. Facilities need more workers and more yeah. people who know how to service seniors. Some seniors want to age in their homes. So that mm -hmm. means you need people who are, you know, certified and maybe licensed and bonded and obviously fingerprinted to come into a senior's home, someone's home and do the meal prep and do the bathing and just give them companionship. Right. That, you know, that industry is booming and there's no end in sight. Yeah. I know that, um, like when I was young, I had never heard of a, uh, travel nurse, you know, like now you, you know, like they have nurses who travel and provide healthcare, you know, services to seniors and stuff like that. So yeah, th this healthcare industry is really, uh, is really one that, like you said, is, is not going to go anywhere. And, uh, Traveling nurses yeah. back in my day were for the uber wealthy. Like if you had a nanny or you had a traveling nurse, you had a lot of money. But nowadays, um, you know, it, it isn't cheap to have a traveling nurse, but you can find them and you can hire them and they will go with you um, to, yeah. you know, specific places. They, I mean, that's in a whole industry of itself now. Yeah, it is a whole nother industry, you know, that people are now, you know, uh, I guess, or private contractor nurses, you know, where they just, um, you know, come in and they, I guess they pick up some of the slack for like maybe a, a, a hospital or maybe some type of medical facility that may need nurses at that time, you know. To Absolutely. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's all good stuff, all good stuff, you know, and I think that, um, it gives people hope, you know what I mean? It gives people hope and let them know that there are going to be opportunities out there and where the opportunities are going to be. You just got to be tenacious, you know, um, try something, give it a good go, you know, give it six months to a year, maybe even give it longer. See if you like it. There's so yeah. much free education and information out there, Mike. You don't really necessarily need to have the whole traditional education anymore. Um, and that's just, that's for a whole nother show. <laughs> but, you know, those of you who do have traditional educations and stuff, and some people are not even working with their degrees because they can't find a job in their degrees. Side hustles are great for, for that as well. You know, any side hustle that you can create and do some research on and just put it out there. Chances are, if you think you have to spend a whole bunch of money on marketing, if you got a mouth, there's your first marketing tool right there. Chances are yeah. there's somebody around you who's going to need uh, a personal trainer or help with their diet, or they're going to, they'll pay you to watch their grandma for, you know, a couple hours while they go out and do shopping. Chances are in a stone's throw from where you are right now, someone's mm -hmm. going to need one of your services. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's, that's one thing that has has never changed. The word of mouth to me has always been the best, you know, the best advertising. So, yeah, you've never really done a lot of in the time that I've known you, Mike. You've yeah. never really done a lot of, you know, billboards and and stuff right, like man. that because your work speaks for itself. Yeah, and yeah, I appreciate that. And but yeah, and then it just takes on a momentum. Same with your work, you know. It just takes on a momentum, you know, like you. You're not going to get rich overnight or be, you know, to the level where you want overnight, but it just builds and builds and builds and, you know, so that's, that's. So click point. the subscribe on this channel and let's yeah. help Mike grow this channel. Okay, people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I appreciate that. And, uh, and also, um, I'm going to put your information up here so people can, you know, they can. Uh, uh, now, this right here is your uh, your merchandise, your merch website. Uh, yes, home, it is. And if we're going to. All right. Well, if we're going to cover that right now, I'll just give it a, a really quick plug. This is an um, this is something that I used um, mm -hmm. for the e-commerce part. And let me tell you it. You know, Mike took a look at it and I value his opinion. And he yeah. told me that it, he liked my designs and he liked the professionalism of the website. Well, guess what, people? You can have your own website there, too, for free. Oh, um, for free. I have not paid a dime. The only thing I have done is actually created the designs myself and written the taglines and 
little descriptions about the store, but myspreadshop.com offers people free drop shipping websites. You just have to put a little work into it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not an affiliate. After this, I probably should be. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this is my venture uh, into e-commerce. And if you take a look at it, you know, so drop me. I know that Mike put my email on there. Drop me a line and tell me what you think about it. I would welcome any feedback on my designs. Um, most of those designs, I will tell you, were created with AI. Um, yeah. That's for another show. And I can't draw my way out of a paper bag. But if Mike's going to put it up, I'll just tell yeah. you that it's, uh, he thinks it looks really professional. So I value that. And, I, and it was very easy for someone like me to get up and running in a matter of hours. Yeah, that, yeah. I mean, I was I'm impressed with it. I really like it. I really like I thought I thought you had outsourced it and had a professional come in and do it because, you um, you know, your website looked really well done. Uh, the artwork was excellent. So, yeah, I, I thought you outsourced it, to be honest. No, was it was. Thank you. <laughs> it was my <laughs> DIY venture into e-commerce. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, so that that's just an example of what you know what people can do when they take the time to, um, you know, and I guess a lot of younger people today, like me, you know, it takes me a while to get things like that done, but I, younger people are just like taking to this like a, a fish to water. Yes, yeah, um, younger people do tend to, and and but believe me, in my business advising, there are some young people who are not tech savvy. Okay whatsoever oh. which is shocking yes. to me it's right, shocking yeah. to me but um even i can point them in the right direction of doing something super simple and mm -hmm. low cost or no cost that's what i'm all about yeah yeah so yeah definitely um so now before we i know we we what what about your consulting do you, you how much consulting i know you're busy all the time and i don't <laughs> want to promote something that gets you overwhelmed but do you still do a lot of consulting I do um, consulting. Oh. Yes, I still do consulting. Um, not as much because I'm working with, you know, I was working with the state of Idaho on a, a little project there. I'm working with the state of Idaho on another project um, that we're trying to get off the ground. But yes, I do have people who come to me. Um, one of your viewers actually uh, came to me, wonderful uh, writer. Um, I believe his name is Clayton. He came right to me here. and I'm going to be um, hopefully, you know, advising him a little bit or, you know, checking in on him. Yes, I still do advising. Um, I okay. give a first, um, my first half hour is complimentary. It's, okay. I've been doing that forever. And it's just to see whether or not I can help you or I'm the right person to help you. And if I'm not the right person to help you, I will find someone who is. Yeah. And all that is true. You, you given me some great business advice and, you also referred me to, you know, someone else who is a, what, what was it? I forgot the lady name. I haven't uh, reached out to her yet. No, but, yeah. Andrea, she is actually yeah. an Emmy award winning uh, producer. <clears throat> Excuse yeah. me. So her and I are actual colleagues. Um, we do okay. work together. We are friends and um, we have been associates, you know, in business coaching. So okay. yes, uh, if I can't, like I said, I don't have any ego, you know, you should know that if I can't find somebody, someone, you know, if I can't help you, then I will find someone who can help you. And I will make sure that they are low cost or no cost for the most part, because I know that entrepreneurs, especially when they start out, you know, they got to do everything there themselves and their, the budget is not all that big. Yeah. Yeah. And I definitely appreciated that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, at least I, I appreciate this interview. You know, always, you know, great advice. You always give great advice. And, um, you know, I know people are going to benefit from the advice you gave here today. And I appreciate, you know, you taking time out. And I look forward to us doing more of these, you know, these interviews about different topics so people can get the, so everybody, you know, more people can get the benefit from your expertise at, uh, you know, consulting and, and your business experience. Well, I appreciate that, Mike. I'm super humbled and, and really honored to be here as well. Um, you know, I'm a solopreneur, a mompreneur, however, what a preneur yeah. you want to put it. And, yeah. um, you know, I I just love what I do. You know, I, I don't, I love what I do. I love helping young businesses and established businesses. 
and you know even helping with their money and their mindset that's huge when it comes to starting a business there are so many overwhelming things that can just you know derail you and as long as you've got a really solid mindset a good with your money and a good marketing plan you can't fail right exactly yeah that, now, and that's excellent advice too because loving what you do is very important you know and a lot of opportunities out there now for people to i mean like the, there's a whole bunch of different opportunities out there so people shouldn't have a hard time finding something that they really you know you know it was limited when i first got into the job market and people just had to work because that's what you you needed to do you know especially if you didn't go to college or anything so you know you had to find a job and stick with it it wasn't whether you liked it or not you just had to do what you had to do yes that's very true and and um things definitely have changed but like you said there are so many opportunities out there just mm -hmm. get out there find one try it start small and watch what happens yeah 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 so yeah so again thanks lisa i appreciate you you know and um, i appreciate I you forward. mike and your and your viewers don't forget to like and subscribe we really want mike's channel to blow up in a good way yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, I appreciate it. So, um, yeah, with that being said, like you just heard, Lisa, make sure to like and subscribe. Also, you know, um, like I said earlier, the links to these to these uh, def different job opportunities will be in the description. And, um, you know, do your homework, do your research and find something that you love to do, like Lisa said. And uh, with that being said, we will check you all out on the next episode because we're